and we are live. Thank you for tuning in. What a good day. Sun's shining. We just wrapped up our Sunday service and it was a certified banger. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I'm just going to wait for a couple of people to jump in, jump onto this trampoline that we call a live recap. This morning was a great morning in church. We had a lot of fresh faces from our coffee bar and we actually prayed for our coffee bar this morning and asked that the Lord would use that space to bring more people into community. You're here to get the message that was preached this morning, get it into your soul. And we are on part two of Romans 8, which is the message title, Your Guide to Getting Over Yourself, part two. That's right, last week was part one, which means this week is part two. If you remember last week, Paul introduced this very bizarre concept of Christ dwelling within us. And I think for a lot of Christians, maybe you're a Christian watching right now, you listen to that and you go, yeah, that makes sense. But would you just think about it from someone's perspective that didn't grow up in church for a second? When you say Christ is in you, that's actually quite bizarre. Let's pick up from verse 11. It says this, If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So then, brothers, we are dead as not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. Because remember, if you don't remember last week, click on last week's video. But we are dead to sin. We're a new creation in Christ. The old is gone. The new is here, uh, according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Now, quick little pause. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. A lot of people say, well, I'm going to go to heaven anyway. I'm a good person. I don't need to go through Jesus. That's actually a lie for all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have been, but you've received the spirit of adoption as sons, who we cry Abba, which means father or dad. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. If children, heirs. Heirs of Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. When Christ dwells within you, he doesn't just visit you, he resides in you. God is not your heavenly stepfather, he is your heavenly father. A, a heavenly stepfather goes, God, this is my week. Next week, you can visit me on these hours from 10 a.m to 11 a.m. on a Sunday morning, you can visit me then. You don't have visitation hours other than that. Let me do my own thing. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. God, visit me on Sunday. That is a spiritual stepfather. We don't have that in Christ. We have a heavenly father in Christ. It doesn't just want to visit you. He wants to reside in you. And thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, we have access to the living God who dwells within us. He doesn't just visit us. God can visit me next weekend. This weekend, I'm hanging out with my flesh. This is a me week. Don't worry. God can visit me next Sunday when I've got nothing else on. I'll just plan it around. God is not your heavenly stepfather. Stop treating him as such. He's our heavenly father. Do you notice that in verse 14, it said those who are led by the Spirit are sons of God. I know a lot of people that say, yeah, they identify as a Christian, but do they allow themselves to be led by the Spirit? Verse 18, it says this, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing to the future glory that, that awaits us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoptions as sons, the redemption of our body. For in this hope, we are saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait in patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for we ought, 
but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. Isn't that beautiful? Verse 27. And he who searches hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to His purpose. For those whom we, for them whom He for, He foreknew, He also predestined. Sorry to be conformed to the image of his son in order that we might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he called. And those who he called, he justified. And those who he justified, he also glorified. That's a lot. Are you still with me? Verse 28 gets misquoted so much. You know, people are just like, oh, um, God works all things together for good. Do you know there's a bit before that and after that says, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. Those who are according to his purpose. You know, there's somehow this major belief of a false pretense where God's job, his sole job is to change everything around me. God, I've said yes to you, now change my situation. God, I've, I've said yes to you, now change my occupation. God, I've said yes to you, now change my status, change my, my trial, change the things that's happening in my life. But the Spirit's role when he resides in you, is to change what's inside of you. Jesus, I say yes to you, now change everything around me. And he's all like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's start with your thoughts. Let's start with your habits. Let's start with your addictions. Let's start with your unforgiveness, your resentment, your bitterness. Let's start with changing what's inside of you and not being so concerned with treating God like a spiritual ATM where we say yes to you, Jesus, now change everything around me. Maybe you're here and you're just like, well, I didn't sign up for that. I said yes to God to change my situation, my circumstance. I didn't say yes to Jesus to change me. I said yes to you to gain things, gain prosperity, gain blessing, gain healing. But we join with Christ so that we get victory. But we also join with Christ in our suffering, in our weakness. Would you close your eyes all over the place today? Watch it online. Close your eyes if you're on your laptop. Hopefully you're not driving. If you're driving, keep them wide open. I'm going to proclaim the end of Romans 8 to you right now. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave himself up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who is to condemn. Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us, who shall separate us from the love of Christ. Shall tribulation, no, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, sword, as it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are regarded as sheep to the slaughter. No, in all these things, We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor demons, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. As you got your eyes closed, I want you to focus on these three things. Write them down. Do what you need to do. Christ in me is greater than me. Christ in me is greater than those around me and Christ in me is my reality. This is your guide to getting over yourself. It's not focusing on yourself, but putting your full attention on Christ. I love you. See you at the shop. See you at a midweek. We'll see you next Sunday as we worship together. See ya.